Uh, hello, everybody. I am Vladimir Serbinenko, and here is, uh, is Mar Maria and Daniel. Uh, and uh, we would li like to have a short presentation about Grub. It will be mostly in the foremost news bulletin. Then what, what hap happened like recently? What, 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 do we, what is our outlook and a couple of uh, other things? So first thing, thing is that for quite some time I, I, I was the only active maintainer of Grub. At first it was kind of okay because I was a student, took quite a lot of free time. Uh, but then when I start, started working, if, uh, first my, my thesis then, then started, started working and uh, it, it was difficult time manage. For a long time we couldn't find an, anybody else who would want to, be, want to become maintainer and simultaneously have the skills for it. And now fortunately we have three people. Uh, so three additional people. Uh, the first is Andre, he couldn't come. Then we have Daniel, and we have Alex Burmashev, who also couldn't come. Uh, se second thing, we have 202 release going on now. We have already released 202 uh, to release candidate one. So now we accept only critical patches. Uh, we have a separate branch for new features. It's branch called Next but it's really not a priority at this point to review new features. So if you send, uh, send a patch for a new feature right now and, and we don't respond timely, it's not because we ignore you, it's because we prioritize uh, test getting the release done. And we expect to have the release at the end of February. And uh, we, are, we are not aware of any release critical bugs in release candidate one, but we are all humans, so most likely there are bugs there. there, there most likely there are release critical bugs, and we need, need help from you all, uh, all to find them. So fire up your favorite machine, your favorite prob problematic machine, and, and run it, and report the bugs. And the 202 release candidate one is available as a tarball on, on that address. And additionally, it's also available as a, uh, as a git, git hash, a git tag in our repository. Uh, what we have new, we have now new supported platforms, uh, especially ARM. If, uh, for ARM, we, last release we had nothing. Now we have, have three flavors. We have U-boot flavor, ARM EFI, 32-bit EFI. We have 64-bit EFI. Uh, we, we, there is work in progress for ARM core boot, but um, it's not in the part of the release. It's a separate branch, which probably will be merged so not, not, uh, not, not far from now, but after the release. And we have Xen para virtualized guests, which is great from security point of view, because this way, file system parsing is, is in, and kernel parsing, everything happens in, in, in unprivileged domain rather than uh, doing it in privileged domain or trying to get the kernel somehow uh, from unprivileged domain to privileged domain. Uh, then we have new multi-boot two features. Daniel can speak more about them. Yeah, it's quite difficult because it's quite a long story and difficult. So um, uh, I was working on Zen uh, at the beginning, and uh, mm, when EFI appeared on the scene on uh, many machines, uh, Jan Bulik added EFI support uh, for Zen, but uh, it was uh, simply a simple P application. And uh, configuration for Zen was passed uh, in a special uh, separate uh, TXT file. Uh, so it means that uh, it was quite difficult for developers to change configuration during boot. And uh, Grab2 allows you to edit configuration, just changes in the menu or something like that. So more, many, many people asked for uh, support, uh, direct support, uh, and um, to have a chance to load uh, Zen uh, from 
uh, grab to. Uh, so I, I, I started working on that, and I quickly realized that we need a, a new um, protocol, which is currently called Multiboot 2. Two, sorry, Multiboot 2. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, it happens. Uh, so uh, I, I, I took a look at, at it. Um, it was uh, in, uh, in Grab available, but uh, unfortunately there were two important uh, features missing. One um, uh, thing was that uh, Multiboot 2 was uh, uh, prepared um, for uh, BIOS platforms. So uh, it doesn't knew anything about EFI and also uh, it wasn't able to pass EFI uh, information, uh, EFI boot services function to operating system. So uh, we, were, we uh, needed to add special uh, options to pass this uh, information from uh, EFI directly to, to, to the OS. Another thing which uh, we met uh, is related to uh, allocation of uh, memory on EFI platforms. Uh, many platforms use uh, low memory, very low memory uh, regions to uh, store uh, runtime services, boot services, and it means we cannot load, uh, for example, Zen image in uh, in a given region, region, uh, because uh, in Zen uh, this region is strictly specified in in the header. So uh, we uh, we found out how to do that, we uh, added uh, self, uh, support for self-rockable uh, images. Uh, unfortunately, we, are not, uh, we haven't time to, sub, to add support for EL, ELF uh, Redox yet, but uh, the framework, uh, framework which is there uh, allows that. Uh, so, uh, currently, the working example of uh, this feature is available on Zendevel mailing list, and I suppose that uh, whole, rank, uh, whole working solution will be available in uh, Zen upstream. So that's it, thank you. And of course, we have added plenty of fixes. And then a couple of future plans and ideas. Uh, we, have, we have already the test, the test framework for Grub that we use for every release, but, um, but um, the problem is that some of the tests require root. They, they are basically FS tests. They create, create a file system much using Linux and then try to read it using Grub. Uh, we would like to make it work without root. Then we w want to need to have some kind of uh, automatic system which would regularly check grub tree just so we can find bugs quicker. Uh, we, we work on kernel verification, which will be the next slide. And of course, it's community project. Just so, so it's uh, so it's uh, it's driven by the contributors. As in, is this, and this includes all of you, everybody who wants to participate. For kernel verifications, there is now a lot of push to have some kind of ways to verify that the kernel is what you expect it to be. Uh, there are different ways of do, uh, doing it. Uh, or they're all backed up by different, uh, different political groups. They have different purposes and so on. And the problem is that we have at least three different incompatible patch sets already available. GPG signatures, TPM, and EFI secure boot via, via shim. Uh, we, so the, the first one is already upstreamed, but the second and the third one, are, uh, I adjust a patch on my, my mailing list, and they're not compatible between each other as far as I ever. So the idea is that um, uh, the, after the release, at least I have a separate branch which makes, uh, which adds a framework for verifiers and allows all the verifiers to peacefully coexist. And uh, now Maria will speak more about group mascot. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to introduce a new better version of group mascot. When I started to contribute to the project, I realized that this well-known project has two logos already, but no one knows it. and. Mm -hmm. 
I discussed this issue with the maintainers, and they agreed that we need something new and easy noticeable. Uh, so we decided to make some uh, nice looking mascot. In my personal opinion, animal mascots are the best solution because they're really easy noticeable uh, and uh, eye-catching. Uh, of course, everyone here, I suppose, knows the Linux Tux Penguin, and uh, he was a kind of inspiration for me. Uh, after the discussion uh, with maintainers, we decided that the crab would be nice. And uh, I started drawing with this hand drawing. The main idea was a crab running, la launching the balloon like a operation system. There were some versions, then we made it better in 2D, then we tried to do it in 3D, and that's uh, uh, the final uh, version right now. Uh, uh, but it's now in a better tasting stage. <laughs> uh, we found already a bug, because many people suppose it's, that's a grub OS. Uh, some why, and uh, I see that we should do something with that. That's not a grub, it's a pure grub. Uh, I am a software engineer. I'm not a designer by my um, primary education, uh, by my education. So uh, if uh, you have some suggestions uh, or would like to add something, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm not pretty sure should we do it in the developer, grab developer mail, mailing list or separately. So now just please send me a personal message. I would really appreciate your help and waiting for your suggestions. Uh, also, I would like to inform you that uh, we are going to have a face to face meeting with maintainers. Uh, today, at 8 p.m. in Gem Hotel rooftop bar. It's uh, not about drinking, not t totally about drinking. It's more about <laughs> <laughs> discussing new features, about uh, graph development, and so on. So if you would like to ask something, ask some questions, uh, say something about the grub, about the mask, and so on, feel free to join us. Of course, everyone pays for himself or herself. If no one will come there, we will leave at 9 p.m. And uh, if you need some further information, you can ask me as well. Uh, you can see here my email, and uh, you can ping me in Hangouts using this email. If you want to join, just take a photo of it. And uh, uh, we are waiting for you. Thanks a lot for your attention, and we are waiting for your questions. Yes? Uh, for uh, the question was how we support NVMe. Uh, this 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 depends on the platform. First of all, if um, if you use EFI or BIOS and either of them already supports NVMe, then Grab will just just use them. Then Grab does not currently have uh, have its own NVMe drivers. Whereas we have some own ATA. ATA and SATA drivers, but they're not used by default because they would conflict with BIOS or EFI. They're used by default on core boot. On, uh, and on, a, on BIOS, you, you can use, you use own drivers for Grub, but currently there is nothing for NVMe, but it's basically patches are welcome, and my experience shows that, that drivers for Grub are actually much easier to write than drivers for fully fledged operating system. So right now we support it only through only if firmware supports it. Yeah. Uh, for for touch screen uh, screen is there, uh, is, it's um, it's not, not, not currently supported, but we have all the underlying things that we need. We have 
I have U USB support. We have, um, I have the support for graphical menu. From there, it would actually be pre pretty easy to write uh, touch screen support. So, so if somebody wants, uh, wants to write it, just drop me an email and, ca and I can give some guidance. Thank you very much, Vladimir, Marie, and David, Daniel. No problem. <laughs>